let's combine some of the simple events together and then find out all possible outcomes for those events. Let's take a look at some examples. So let's say we toss two coins at the same time. What are all possible outcomes that can happen? Well, we know that whenever we toss our first coin, coin one, we have two possible outcomes. Similarly, when we toss our second coin, we have two possible outcomes. What are the outcomes? Well, outcomes are either heads or tails. We know that whenever we toss any coin, they are the only, those are only two possible outcomes. Now, the question is, how do we combine them? So we can think of it this way, that when we toss our first coin over here, and let's say we get a heads. Now, when we toss our second coin, let's say we again get a heads. So this is our first outcome. Next, we can get a heads on our coin one, and now we can get a tails on our coin two. This will be our second outcome. Now, let's say we get a tails on our coin one, and now we get a heads from our coin two. And finally, we get a tails on coin one, and we get a tails on coin two. So these are the four possible outcomes that can happen when we toss two coins at the same time. And it's important to understand that each coin by itself has only two outcomes, head or tail. But when we have two coins, now we have four outcomes. And the first part of each of the outcome represents coin one, and the second part represents coin two. So we say here that there are a total of four possible outcomes. Let's take a look at our second example. This time, we are going to roll two dice at the same time and we will find out what are all possible outcomes. Now, we are calling our blue dice as dice one and our red dice as dice two. Now we know that whenever we roll a dice, we have a total of six possible outcomes. That is the number one, two, three, four, five, or six. This is true for dice one as well as for dice two. The question now is, how do we combine them? So let's say we roll both the dice, the blue and the red together, and now, let's say we get the number one for dice one. What are all the values that we can get for dice two? Well, the dice two can have any of the six values on the top. So how do we really write this? So the way we write this is as follows. So we will put a bracket and we will say that one comma one. The first one represents the dice one and the second one represents what we see on dice two. So the first one is this one, and the second one is this one. What is the second outcome? Second outcome is one comma two, because the first dice is still one, and second dice is now two. So similarly, the third will be one comma three, then one comma four, one comma five, and one comma six. So these are six outcomes where we get the number one on dice one, and the number one or two or three or four or five or six on dice two. So similarly, we can get the number two on dice one. And again, we will have six values for dice two, which we can then write as two comma one, two comma two, two and three, two and four, two and five, two and six. Next up, we can get the number three on dice one, and we will have again six values that we can get on dice two which we will then write each outcome as 3 comma 1, 3 comma 2, 3 comma 3, 3 comma 4, 3 comma 5, and 3 comma 6. Similarly, we can get the number 4 on dice 1, and each of the outcomes for dice uh, are dice 1 as 4, we can write them as 4 comma 1, 4 comma 2, 4 comma 3, 4 and 4, 4 and 5, and 4 and 6. So when we get the number 5 on dice 1, we have again the 6 values from dice 2, which each of the outcome we can write them as 5 comma 1, 5 comma 2, 5 comma 3, 5 comma 4, 5 comma 5, and 5 comma 6. And finally, we can get the number 6 on dice 1. And now we can write each outcome as 6 comma 1, 6 comma 2, 6 comma 3, 6 comma 4, 6 comma 5, and 6 comma 6. So there are a total of 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 
There are a total of 36 possible outcomes when we roll two dice at the same time. 